So I'll introduce myself. Uh, I'm Scott Perley from ITERIS. I'm the Vice President of Performance Analytics. Um, I run the IPEM software practice uh, for, the, for the firm. Uh, this is my third training uh, at Utah. I um, uh, uh, was here in 2008, 2013, 2018, so you'll see me again in 2023 <laughs> uh, if I keep that, that same schedule. Um, and uh, we've been uh, excited to have Utah as such a strong partner on our, uh, on our tools for, for FUI PEMS and now excited to, to sort of walk you through what uh, the third party data uh, provided by here uh, looks like. Terry Johnson, I've been in this industry for quite a while, over 30 years. I worked with Traffic.com before, so I've been with Traffic.com and here for since 2000. And um, I'm excited because Scott and I have worked together for a long time, um, starting with Traffic.com. And I'm an engineer, and um, I'm excited to be here. If you're not familiar with this project, and I think most of you are, but it's really IPEMS, this application that takes here data and does stuff with it. And we have one minute data that we're providing uh, to the IPEMS application. So it's sensor probe based data. And then we're also providing event information. And in this application, you can pull information like historical speed data, travel time data, and then real time, uh, hopefully to, to, to support your DMS signs. Then there's the, to the analytic tools that has all the different types of performance measures and bottlenecks and user cost delay, all, the, all those interesting things that some of you get really, who really dig into, and then map vis visualization. So this is what Scott's going to be going over today. I wanted to tell you a little bit about us, and the reason this kind of tells you where, the, where things are going and what's happening now in the industry. We were purchased by a consortium of Audi, BMW, and Daimler. And what's exciting about that is that the data that they have in their connected vehicles, we're getting that data. And then what, how that benefits Utah is that that data is going to be shared in the data feeds with, um, with our clients, our public sector clients. In addition, in this consortium, other companies like Bosch and Intel uh, and Pioneer, these companies are technology companies in the, in the automated vehicle world. And they'll be providing things like aftermarket products. And as we continue to work with them, we're going to start getting more and more data. We work with all these car companies. Now, right now, we're not getting, other than Audi, BMW, and Daimler, we're not getting any connected vehicle data from them yet. I have a slide that I'll talk about that. But these are all clients of ours, and many of them are partners. We can't always say who our partners are. I don't even, I'm not even told in our company who's actually providing data because it's very secretive because of, you know, some of these companies don't want someone to say, we're giving our data, the data that we're getting from you to another company. But a number of these are partners of ours. And a number of the car companies that we will be getting data from them. Um, and I know we're working on a number of contracts right now with a number of those uh, car companies that probably have more cars here than, than the Audi, BMW, and Daimler. And that's why we're excited. We're partnering with a lot of these companies. Now, I mean, we're getting data from the vehicles, those vehicles, right, from the connected vehicle. We're also getting some data from other vehicles. It's not the same. It's not the connected vehicle, but we're getting data from some other vehicles. We have mobile devices. Those are typically like apps that people are using, we're, we're getting data from those. We provide data to a huge number of fleet companies. We're a mapping company, so we have applications that tell them where to deliver, like where actually the delivery door is, not the front address. So we have a lot of products that we provide trucking and delivery companies. So a lot of them provide their data to us. We purchase data from a lot of different sources. And then also, you know, we integrate agency sensors. Agency sensor data is not really used that much because it's really just a, a kind of a point. But there are times when there are no probes on the, on the road. And when that happens, then we'll pull in the sensor data to supplement, to add information to our algorithm. 
What's exciting about this data that we're getting from the vehicles, from the connected vehicles, is that it's very accurate and it's very low latency. So as we're getting this, we're getting pings from these vehicles quite a bit, which is what's really exciting. And it sometimes probe data, you'll get a GPS reading and it won't really match to a roadway. So you have to, have to throw it out. But all this data is super accurate. And what's exciting about it is that the data comes to us all the time. As soon as a car is turned on, we're getting this data. And we've seen a huge increase in our arterial coverage by integrating the data from the vehicles. And we expect that, like I said, as we continue to get more and more connected vehicle companies on board, we'll see an even, even higher increase in uh, amount of information. And then generally, you'll see more and more on the arterials, which will help with all the signal time and that type of stuff. And that data is included in our, our data feed for real-time data. We're also getting hard braking information from vehicles. And that data is in our incident and event feed that we have that is being integrated by IPEMS. You can see, I mean, 2015, and, and we've been providing data since 2008, so you can imagine how low that data, how minimal that data was in 2008. From 2015 to even like 2018, there's been a 150% increase or more. And we're really focusing on getting more and more of that data from the connected vehicles because that data is quality is really has been excitingly. So we're integrating probes, we're continuing to integrate them. Even though we've integrated most of the consortium data, it's going to continue to, to add more. We first started integrating a lot of it in Germany, of course, because they're in Germany, but and then now we're getting a lot of it in the U.S. And we expect, I think our plan is, uh, is to have over 12 automotive companies' data, connected data, integrated into our system by 2020. And even increasing from 130 billion pro points per month to 190 by just the end of this year, which is a huge increase. So we're super excited about that and helping and expanding the coverage and the accuracy of the data on the roadways. Will there be a way that we can tell that the probes are increasing or is that something that you guys will be able to just tell internally? I mean, we won't know when obviously these contracts are formed. Right, right. So is this just something that you guys would send out press releases with? I don't know what kind of press releases will be going out related to how we're using we're integrating the data. So I think if there's a press release that says, here's signed an agreement with a certain car company, we can probably assume that we'll be getting data. But they're not going to say, they're sharing your location. I mean, they're not going to yeah. say that. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on within our company that I don't even know about. Like, I'll hear things. So I don't even know about some of that. Um, but so we do. be able to tell us when the pro points are going up. <laughs> Well, maybe we'll um, have better data on Zion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, there are some roads here that we just don't have a lot of data. And we're hoping, I know we're, we have a big push in September. I'm hoping to see a push. But we do have something, and I, we're not providing it to everyone. And we'll talk to you about um, where we have some probe count information that we're talking about sharing with agencies. And we might be able to look at that and see how that will increase. And that's something that we can maybe do with you guys. Yeah, we'd be really interested in coming I know. <laughs> you guys want it all. <laughs> uh, right, you want it all. It's, not, it's, it's probably something that you know, we'll probably work with like, you guys on, not something we'll be probably sharing with everyone because it's pretty confidential. But you know, some of the studies that you guys are doing, and we can figure out how, how we want to do it. And I'm sure Scott's going to want to put it in, in, in IPEMS because he wants everything in IPEMS. Yeah, we just had a strategic meeting, and they sent me a list of 20 things that they want from us. And we want this, and we want that, um, which is all good, because we're data. That's really what we are. And IPEMS is what take, makes sense of our data. I think the other way you would tell that there was more data is the confidence scores would change. Sure. Okay. So I have some examples for, for the um, for tomorrow, uh, the change in the sensors over time. Yeah, that's probably that's a good point. Scott has a lot of good points. That's why I like working with him. But I want to get into the just data a little bit, how it's delivered. So when we say TMCs, that's not a TMC like you think of a TMC. That's called a traffic message code. That's how data is delivered. Years ago, the car companies decided that they wanted data delivered in a certain format to the car companies 
traffic flow data, and this is what they decided. This is how the data is, is delivered by TMCs. Well, as the data became better and more granular and more accurate and the quality continued to improve, we started to be able to kind of break down the TMCs and make it a little more accurate. So let's say on a freeway, it's typically interchange to interchange. And this could be one mile, it could be a number of miles. But now what we're able to do because of the data is we're able to break it up into segments to, to, to let you know, for example, this could be interstate where you're heading into an exit and there's a problem at the exit and you'll see a, start to see a backup. And before that data was averaged over that whole segment, well now it's divided and you can get more accurate information along that segment. I grabbed a real time, we'll call this, this is a TMC, that whole links right here is a TMC. And that is 1.8 miles long. So within that TMC, there are something called links. And there are 17 links. And the links are, they're actually created in our map. They're based on the geometry of the roadway. So if you have this TMC and there's a road right there, then the link might go to there. Or if there's a, any kind of geometrical change, uh, road, it breaks the links down into those types of segments. So when you have um, an arterial roadway, you're going to have a number of segments that make up that whole TMC. And those are called links. And Scott's going to kind of get into what the links are and how you use that in IPEMS. So it's really breaking it down. So there's 17 links along this. But this could be made up of like four links. But then this could adjust to here if this starts to change. And so that's how we're going to get the information. So here on this green section, we're going 22 miles per hour. And then on this red section, it's 14. So you can see what's happening along that full section of the roadway. Scott, do you want to add anything? Or, or just, does that, do you think that covers? Essentially, here sends the whole state in a file, and we parse out the offsets. All the data gets applied to the link level, and then we let you roll that up into, into links and routes. So I'll walk through in, in the IPEM section how you navigate two different data sets, looking at a very small section of roadway on a link, and then uh, looking at that um, aggregated over route. We don't display the TMC level uh, data because we let you roll it up to a route. It's really an, an artificial numbering system assigned for a particular purpose. Can I back you up for just a minute? You said you get a lot of your data from connected vehicles. Mm -hmm. Are you also getting that information from like people who are using Google Maps to na navigate? I'd love to say I was getting Google Map data. Google is really probably our, they're our biggest competitor, right? Just in the world, they're, they're our biggest competitor. So that you're not getting their information, you're no. getting information from others. But from other sources like here apps, there's other here application, mapping application. We get it from that, and then we get it from a lot of other apps. You know, on your app, if it's tracking your location, then depending on what app, we're getting information from that. You will hear random things about how car companies are using different apps like Google. It's, it's usually it's like one version of the, the car. Like if they're working on a project with BMW, we're still getting that data, and go, even though Google's doing a project with them. You guys are the first agency who's getting something called deep coverage, which is providing data on any road that has a probe. Part of the reason is because if we started showing you know, that in everywhere in the world, it would be such a humongous amount of data. Um, so, but you guys, since you put it in your RFP, uh, we had to deliver. So you got this early. Um, so you're the only one. So basically what this means is traffic data is delivered on a t by a TMC, right? Well, not every road has a, quote, a TMC code. If it doesn't have a code, then we had to figure out how to deliver that data on a non-TMC roadway, right? And so what we did is we have something called dynamic location referencing. And that provides data on roadways that are not TMC coded. And they're usually, like, all well, freeways are TMC coded, but then there's sometimes as you get into the lower level roads, they're, they're not TMC coded. Um, a lot of the car companies, they didn't want all those roads because it was too much data to pull into the car. 
and that's one of the biggest reasons why. But our company is realizing that agencies and a lot of other folks, not the car companies, but want data on all roads. Any time that there's a number of probes on even any of these smaller roadways in here, will start showing up. It'll, it'll show the color of what's happening on that road. And Scott is pulling that data in. So as you start looking at the data from Scott, there might be sections of roads where you're going to have data five times a day maybe, right? But it's just that's when the probe was there. But there, that's typically smaller roadways. So I think that's something that's pretty exciting because you guys are getting, anytime there's data, you guys are getting it and then you can and do more. And as we continue to get more data, then those roads will have more data and you can start aggregating the data, maybe taking a year's worth of data. How Scott will get into all those ways because he likes talking about all that stuff. One other thing I wanted to share is it's not just the probe points that we're pulling in. When you come to arterial roadways, it becomes a little challenging because cars are stopping and going. If you take a look at um, what's happening, if you start just taking those probe, you, you may get pretty poor data, right? Because this could be that you're getting a data point at one mile an hour. Let's say you stop there, or you're going one mile an hour. Then you grab it again, and it's one mile an hour. So if you do that, your speed is going to be one mile an hour, right? But we do something called probe pass or space mean speed, where we take the probes and we take it along the segment. So if you take those two in that path, that vehicle is actually going about 20 miles an hour between the two points that we gather data. And so that's what we're, we're using in our algorithm to provide information. And then the last thing I want, oh wait, not quite last. We have a traffic oper operations center, and I think a number of you, some of you have worked with our traffic operations center. Uh, we've had traffic operations center forever, since, since 1998 actually, <laughs> and we pull in data. And what we're doing um, is 24-7, it focuses on Utah, but really focuses on the major incidents. And what we're working on now is to integrate the Utah feed. It still needs to go through our operators to confirm, but we'll be pulling that, that data in to add a more, because uh, I know you guys have a lot more incidents than we, we typically report on. And we're working on that now. And my final slide, I just want to mention, this is future. But we're working with the car companies. We're already pulling in fog lights, ABS brake, headlights, ignition, wipers. We are pulling all this data in from these vehicles and sharing this information and the use cases with other car companies. So all those three car companies are sharing all this information. We're working to get this information available to us so we can provide it to Scott and to IPEMS so we can address some of these use cases in the future. So as that starts to happen, we will obviously let you guys know and we're excited for that to happen and we're working on, we're, you know, we're working on it. And I think that's it. Thank you. Yes, Jimmy. So what is the frequency of the data coming in? Mm -hmm. Second or minute or? That's a good question. The raw, the raw data. It's a good question. It depends. <laughs> so some data is up to two minutes. We don't collect anything if it's more than two minutes. I think we've, I mean, we used to do that. But as you start to get more and more probes and the quality starts to improve, then you start canceling the contracts with people who don't have as good a quality or as, or as frequent. So some of them we get every five seconds. And some we get uh, 20 seconds, some are 30 seconds. I know there's a, a lot that are a minute. I think, I mean, this was the last statistic I saw, and this was a while ago, I think 80% is less than a minute. And so that's about where we are. That was probably like two years ago. Yeah. Any other questions? I'm trying to get a handle on the connected vehicles. So those cars are sending data to some satellites mm -hmm. automatically, right? Yes. Just now, like. What is a probe? Is that? Is, is there some systems that's interrogating a, a system on a cell phone or yeah. GPS system and it gives information up through satellite systems? Right, right. So if you're on your, on your cell phone and you're using an application that we're partnering with and you know how it shows that you're sharing your data, then yeah, that company is pinging the data and sending it to us. Okay. So they're pinging through some kind of satellite system. Right. Okay. I don't know if it's sa cellular. It's cellular, it, it's cellular yeah. Yeah, not satellite. And then we also purchase data from a number of companies that who pull in data from a lot of different things, and then we buy data from them. So if you go to your phone app 
and it's you go to privacy and location services and there's all these the apps that you provide your location while you're using it and you might have it on in the background and they're picking it up mm -hmm. and then they're in turn able to sell it to other companies in one of those companies. Uh, yeah, I guess then, what he's saying, I know there's different vendors. Yes. The mm -hmm. application providers that are paying here and getting this information. Is there is there a an accuracy standard for that location across all these applications? No, that's a good question. We have a, I mean, I have a whole deck of slides that talk about how we evaluate quality. So basically, we pull in the data, and then we check it for accuracy. We check it for, is it located actually on a road? Is it too far? Um, is it consistent with, our readings seem consistent? I mean, so we do a whole bunch of work on that, because if we're paying for the data, we want to make sure it's good. So I think that might answer your question, right? So we do, we, we evaluate all the data that we're getting to determine if we if we believe it's accurate we'll compare it to other data sets now that we have like the connected vehicle data which is extremely accurate we will start comparing it to that to see how it how it compares when we evaluate data we continuously evaluate our current partners and then we'll drop drop them if we feel like we have more data and their data isn't as high quality as it should be how quickly does that data become available to you Doc? When it comes in, pretty fast. The feeds, I'll talk a little bit about this, but the feeds come uh, as a, an update every minute. Um, and so there's some processing that happens on here's end to process the data in for the raw feeds, and then it's processed out as a feed every minute. But those, that, that's a continual update that goes on in their, in their background. And as we get new data, we, we pull it into, into iPads, and you see the, the real-time the real data on the maps. And then